Hello, hello. Welcome back. This is Insurance Hour. I am your host, Carl Sussman. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here today. Phones are open, 559-656-0317. Always looking for your questions. As you can tell, we are going through a lot of those questions today. So send them in at questions at insurancehour.com. If you need help right away, you can dial pound 250 on your cell phone. You can also use the keyword insurance to get an agent right away. Or if it's specific to homeowner's insurance, you can use the keyword homeowner's insurance. So again, on your cell phone, you just dial pound, right, or hashtag 250. And when it asks for the keyword, say insurance or homeowner's insurance, if that's what you need. Before I jump back into the questions, I do want to make sure that I'm I'm clear The sponsor is GeoVera. You heard their commercial just now, and I honestly do have and have had for a very long time my personal home insured for earthquake insurance with them. You can imagine I can pretty much get earthquake insurance wherever I want, depending on which carrier I want to go to, and I do personally choose GeoVera for what that's worth, and it should be worth a lot. Jumping back in. We were talking about uh, the California Fair Plan and some of the discounts that are available. The next question says, where can we get information on what the fair plan considers a hardened home and defensible space? It's a great question. And the answer is with the form. The form for discounts literally lists on it specifically what it is that you need to do in order to get the discounts. There are a group of things you need to do that will give you a discount for doing things around your home. And there's another set of things that you can do that will give you a discount for things you do to the home. I will provide a copy of that if you don't have it handy or you're having trouble finding it online. Just shoot me an email, questions at insurancehour.com. I'll just fire back a copy of the PDF. It's a one-page simple PDF from the California Fair Plan that lists those discounts and what it is you need to do to get them. Next question also about the Fair Plan. On Fair Plan discounts, what certifications are required for a hardening home and defensible space discounts? And must it be full compliant or portions achieved for some discount? Okay. I think what they're asking is when you're getting these discounts that we've talked about now, do you have to do everything to get the discount or can you just do some of the things? And unfortunately or fortunately, depending on your perspective, I guess, you need to do everything to qualify for each of those two discounts. So, for example... If you do everything for the home hardening discount, meaning you do everything to your actual house, you will get one discount. Done. But you have to do all of the things for the home. If you don't do anything for the discount around the home, that's okay. That's a separate discount. You could also do things just around the home and not to your home. It's up to you. But at the end of the day, in order to qualify for one or both of those discounts, you have to do everything that is required for that particular section. Does that make sense? You either do everything for the house, you do everything for around the house, or you do both. But you can't do half of each, for example, and get a discount. Keep in mind, anything you do that makes your house less likely to burn is a good thing, whether you get a discount or not. Keep in mind, the goal is not to have a claim, right? The goal is not to have a loss, not to have your house burn down. So... Sometimes I think we forget that the goal is no loss and we're very focused on how much can we save, how much can we save, how can we lower the premium, where sometimes it makes sense to do things not just because we're saving money, but because it'll protect our house, right? That's at the end of the day what we really want to have happen. Next question. Uh, Are there insurance companies that are still insuring over 3 million homes? It would be helpful to avoid calling those that are not covering high value homes. Okay, when someone says $3 million homes, I have to quantify that because are we talking about the value of the home, right? What it, what it would be bought or sold for? Or are we talking about $3 million and what the actual replacement cost of the structure of the home is? They're two different things, as you can imagine. You might have a very, very small home, but it's in a very affluent area, a very sought after area. So it might sell for $3 million. Is it going to cost $3 million to buy? It could be tiny. It might only cost a million dollars to buy. So it makes makes a difference if we're talking about the replacement cost of a home or what the actual value of the home is. To answer your question, $3 million for replacement cost on the structure tends to be a higher value home. And you are going to have less options right now, if that's even possible, than the average person that might be looking to get coverage for $2 million or even $1 million. So again, if you're looking to get your home insured and you are looking at a home that has a higher replacement cost value, in this example, $3 million or more, 
it's going to be more of a challenge and be expected to pay, expecting to pay a lot more than you probably were before or definitely more than you want to. Next question. Will the forthcoming California Department of Insurance Safer from Wildfire initiative include multifamily residential buildings and their HOA's common area, which are separate commercial insurance policies? That's a great question. Three or four different things in here. Safer from Wildfires is an initiative that you can ha- that everybody can participate in because it's going to protect the it's going to protect the property from wildfire. If you're looking for the specific discounts, I can't tell you for sure if that's something that's available for homeowners associations or not, but I definitely want to check into that and find out. Now, you also made a comment about commercial insurance policies, and you also talked about multifamily policies versus HOAs. Very different. For example, a single family home, a duplex, a triplex, and a fourplex are considered residential properties, whereas an HOA, a homeowners, a homeowners association, is truly a commercial exposure. So you're going to be looking at a completely different environment for obtaining insurance. You're going to be looking at a completely different environment for the cost and availability and everything else surrounding it. And yes, the single family, duplex, triplex, and fourplex is considered personal insurance, even though it might be all rented out, right? For the sake of discussion, that's going to fall in the category when you're hearing about rules and regulations of a personal residential policy. Next one, we have a lot of fair plan questions. My fair plan premium would be $4,500 if a public fire hydrant within a thousand feet, but the hydrant is 1500 feet away and the resulting premium is $7,500. They treat it as if there were no hydrant near the house at all. No incremental consideration is given to the hydrants, even though it's still nearby and we've installed private water, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. I don't, I'm not minimizing it by et cetera, et cetera. I'm trying to save, uh, save a little bit of time. Here's the situation in general, and this is not the California fair plan. You have to draw a line somewhere. Insurance companies and the California fair plan have to have guidelines. They can't make everything exactly the way that it makes sense. They have to go along some line of guidelines. And I understand if they're giving you 1,500 square feet, uh, 1,500 feet versus 1,000 feet, and you're like, hey, I'm close, come on, work with me here. They can't, at least not today. They have to go based on the specific guidelines as they're filed with the Department of Insurance. Now, having said that, there's nothing that says that that insurance carrier, or in this case, the fair plan, can update their guidelines with some of the new regulations coming out so they can actually give you a different price depending on how many feet you are to the fire hydrant versus being a block this close or a block that close, something along those lines. Another quick break and we will be back. I am Carl Sussman and this is Insurance Hour. Back in a flash. Thanks for watching. If you found this useful, please be sure to like and subscribe for more content. And don't forget, click here to watch the next video.